Nigeria's National Emergency Agency collaborating with the Red Cross to reunite families displaced by Boko Haram attacks. Flood warnings for a number of states in Nigeria, with authorities concerned that the season brings more rain than some ground areas can handle. And entrepreneurs are alive and well throughout the continent, including the chocolate mamas in Tanzania. Those stories and more coming up as Africa 54 starts right now. Hello, I'm Cynthia Area, Channel Television here in Lagos. Stay with us in the next half hour for stories from Nigeria and the continent. And I'm Vincent McCorry, a voice of America, coming to you from our global headquarters here in Washington. Now, the Nigerian Meteorological Agency, NIMET, issued flood warnings last week for states such as Kaduna, Kwara, Nasarawa, Yobe, and Zamfara. NIMET stated that floods were expected in these areas and others because the soil is not able to absorb any more of the season's rainwater. Joining us now to talk about this is the Public Information Officer of the National Emergency Management Agency, Southwest Zone, Mr. Ibrahim Farinloui. Mr. Farinloui, thank you so much for joining us on Africa 54. Now, we recall what happened back in 2012. How ready are we to, um, to deal with this flood disaster that might be pending? The readiness started immediately long before. We have what we call contingency plan in mm -hmm. place. And on, since uh, Saturday, various meetings have been taking place. Presently now, like in uh, Oyo State, the Southwest Zona Office are engaging the rural community, the FBO, faith-based organizations, making use of the youth, especially the National Youth Corps members. They are carrying out road, uh, road show here and there in Ogun State, we've uh, identified about 20, 22 communities that are disaster prone, which could be affected. That sounds and, like there's a lot of collaboration going on. But uh, uh, what should we do as individuals, you know, also on, in, on our end, to ensure that, you know, we're not affected well, badly by the... Last week, we were engaged in uh, various activities and we received not less than 1,000 phone calls, complaints from different, especially within Ogun, Songu Ota, Aziz, to Yana Paja, we received such phone calls. The other side across the country, uh, most people, they forget the safety, their own safety. Mm -hmm. They risk their life. Two people that, were, that lost their lives in Gombe State yesterday, they ignored all the safety measures. While it was raining, they pulled themselves onto the road and the, water, and the rainwater washed them away. When there is any, whether there is any early warning system about flooding or not, first, get a secured place mm -hmm. that is not a temporary place. Sit down there, let the rain subside completely, especially the drainage. Let it subside, get clear view of the areas. Then dumping off before you step out. Yes. Then the motorist. Mm -hmm. You should notice that when a flood water gets to halfway of your rim, that water can take away any vehicle. At the same time, temporary place, we shouldn't go under a shade, which is temporary because it can easily be swept away. Thirdly, sending children on a rant when it's cloudy, mm -hmm. is very, very dangerous. Yes. Children will not know where to, when to come out or when not to come out. They would just like to be playing inside that water. So it's sending them on a rant can endanger their life and they can be swept away. Mr. Farno, that, that has to do with people who actually have homes. What about those who have been displaced? What measures are being taken to, to handle the, um, um, their yes. situation? The displaced people have a sort of semi-freedom. So the camp managers, we monitor and uh, regulate their movement, especially when there is a sign of danger, because various actors play in camp management. So it's not only the humanitarian uh, mm -hmm. managers that we get engaged there. And once they are, you know, like the security aspects, we regulate their movement. So once there is a sign, the coordinator, which is going to be the camp coordinator, which is going to be NEMA, we issue 
immediately immediate uh, report, I mean, uh, caution to the camp management at the gates not to get things done, what to be done, what not to be done. So those IDPs in those areas will be regulated and they will be advised appropriately. Well, Mr. Farano, it definitely sounds like you're very prepared for whatever might come in terms of your organization and also NIMETS. Thank you so much for joining us on Africa 54 today. Thank you, ma. Thank you very much. Now, the National Emergency Management Agency, NEMA, in collaboration with the International Committee of the Red Cross Society, is helping to reunite families displaced by Boko Haram attacks in the Northeast. Take a look. It's not exactly what you would call a home, but for these Boko Haram victims, it will do just fine, considering the hell they fled from when the terrorists attacked their communities. <laughs> NEMA has its hands full. It not only has to cater for these internally displaced persons by providing food and shelter, the agency also tries to trace and unite them with their families. At the point we have about 211 unaccompanied children. But with time, the number got reduced to the current population that we have now of uh, 64. There are situations when we also have to go to the media to make public announcement that there are people who are unaccompanied so that uh, so that they can come and, uh, and, and and have a look. NEMA is however not taking all the credit. International agencies such as the ICRC are also helping out. Uh, they are not just concerned about linking families that are within camps, they are also concerned in linking families that are even across the border. So sometimes they link up children who are in Cameroon with parents in Nigeria, or children who are in Chad with parents in Nigeria. And so they have been working side by side with us. Dar es Salaam refugee camp, just outside Bagasola, a border town on Lake Chad. That's how far some children had to run for their dear lives. Here, the ICRC's reunification program brings renewed hope of returning home. All of these children come from a town called Baga on the shore of Lake Chad in the northeast of Nigeria. The town was hit by the armed conflict in early January 2015 and this is when the children became separated from their families. With the arduous task of tracing the children's families completed, it's time to head home. It's a pot puri of emotions, tears and laughter as the kids eventually reunite with their families. Family life begins for these reunited families, but thousands more still remain separated from their loved ones. As the Multinational Joint Task Force intensifies the fight against insurgency, the projection is that more displaced people will be assisted to find their way back home. Well, we want to know what you think about Africa 54 and the stories we cover. Share the conversation on Facebook. The address is Africa 54. And check out our headlines 24-7 on voaafrica.com. Coming up, from cosmetics to cooking, shea butter is popular around the world. And women in Ivory Coast are taking advantage of the product's popularity. That story after the break.